Part one. You'll hear a conversation between a student and the coordinator of the student service center. First, you have some time to read questions one to three. Now listen to the conversation and answer questions one to three. Hi, sit down, please. How can I help you? Thank you. I'm a student in the sociology faculty. I'm coming to ask for some information about renting a room in the college or near the campus. My name is Sarah. Yes, Sarah. How long have you been here in Sydney? You are not new, I suppose. No, I'm in my second year. I came to Sydney eighteen months ago from Korea. Where are you living now? I live with my aunt in my cousin's room. It's pretty nice to live with my relatives, but unfortunately, my cousin has finished his term and is returning from Britain next week. I have to rent a room for myself.、Mm, yes, it sounds a little unfortunate, but I suppose it's a good chance for you to have a deeper understanding to real world. I hope so. Well. What sort of thing are you looking for?、Uh, what we provide ranges from shared flat to homestay, and of course we have houses with gardens if you like. No, the house with a garden is obviously out of my price range. Shared flat is not bad, but I prefer a homestay. I enjoy the feeling of living with the family. When do you plan to begin the rent? Next week, you just said. No, my cousin is arriving by next week. So I hope to move out by this weekend. This weekend, okay. The main area we deal with is around the university. Around the university, aha.、Uh -huh. Do you have anything near the northern gate of the university? You know, the sociology faculty is near the northern gate. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions four to ten. Now listen to the conversation and answer questions four to ten. Yes.、Uh, what sort of price are you thinking of? Well, could you give me some idea? You know, I have no experience of renting a room. I don't know what price is reasonable, but I hope it's not over three hundred dollars. I see. Usually, the homestay ranges from a hundred and eighty dollars per month. Only a hundred and eighty dollars? Yes, to three hundred and fifty dollars, depending on a number of different factors. What does it depend on? Well, obviously, the quality of the house, the facilities, and extra services. Oh, I don't care about the quality very much, as long as it's clean. As to the facilities, I want the room with the separate bathroom. Kitchen isn't a necessity because I don't want to cook by myself. I hope to have meals with the family if possible. Okay, let me check the files.、Mm, yes, I think this one might suit you. It's a family house with two vacant bedrooms. How about the owner of the house? I mean, is it a family or?、Uh, according to the file, it is a retired lady. She wants to find college students as tenants. That's great. What's the condition of the rooms? The bigger bedroom is furnished and with a bathroom, and the rent is three hundred and twenty dollars per month. The smaller one charges two hundred and fifty dollars. It is furnished too, but without bathroom. Oh, three hundred and twenty dollars! It's a bit out of my range, but I think I prefer the bigger one. How about the meals? Well, the rent includes breakfasts and suppers. No lunches, however. You have to buy your lunch. That's no problem. I usually have my lunch in the college cafeteria. And that doesn't cover the water bill and electricity fee, but the laundry is included. Fine. Could you tell me the address? Yes, it's on three two three West Park Road. Let me get that down, three two three. Okay, it's near the university. So when can I have a look at the room? You know, I'm a little pressed for time. 
The file says the landlady is in every afternoon. So this week, say Friday. Oh, I'm afraid I can't make it then. I have a lecture on Friday afternoon till five thirty. How about Thursday? Okay, that's fine. Would five be okay? Yes, fine. Just come here. Yes, here in the student service office. Oh, before I forget, before moving, you have to pay one month's rent in advance. Really? Oh, I didn't know that before. Could I ask why? As the deposit, you know, in case you damage the property or move out without giving notice. Usually, this doesn't happen, but standing in the owner's shoes. Yes, I understand it all. So that's three hundred and twenty dollars. Okay, I'll take the money if I'm satisfied. Well, a word of advice: don't forget to get a receipt when you pay the deposit or rent. Yes, thank you so much. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. Part two. You will hear a talk about societies and events at a university. First, you have some time to look at questions eleven to sixteen. Now listen carefully and answer questions eleven to sixteen. Hi, and welcome to the students' union. You've all been here a week now, and hopefully you're finding your feet. You might be wondering what there is to do on campus apart from going to lectures, doing essays, going out with friends, and having late nights. Tonight, you're going to hear about some of the societies, clubs, and associations that you can join as a new student. As well as the cultural events going on that might interest you, Richard Hillman from Student Services has come along this evening to tell you more. Good evening. It's good to be here and to see you all. But let me say straight away that as students of the university, you are entitled to join free of charge over a hundred societies on the official list. Okay, let's begin. I'd be prepared to bet that whatever your interests, you're almost sure to find a club or society here for you. Not surprisingly, there are the long-established clubs that you can find at any university, like the football club or the drama society, along with a whole range of less usual clubs. For example, the rock society. <laughs> We do have a rock climbing club here, but the rock society has nothing to do with outdoor activities. It's a music club. That takes me neatly on to the mountaineering club. Now it might surprise you that a university in one of the flattest parts of the country has a thriving group of mountaineers. They meet twice a week on Tuesdays from five in the afternoon until ten o'clock in the evening, and on Thursday afternoons from one o'clock until five. At their regular meetings, they use the climbing wall, but they also organise trips to real mountains both here and abroad during the vacation. Another rather out of the ordinary society you might like to try is the dance club. They meet regularly every Friday. This term they're running salsa classes. Next term it's tango, and in the summer it'll be Scottish dancing. <laughs> Quite a selection. They also put on special events twice a term, either performances by visiting groups or actual dances. Their next event is next Saturday when they're putting on a Latin evening. Go along and try out your samba. At the moment, the dance club is trying to attract new members who may have new ideas for future classes and events. If you're an overseas student, you may find there is a society for students from your country putting on events that'll make you feel more at home. 
The Mexican society, for example, is putting on a special Christmas celebration with traditional Mexican food and drink. And every four weeks, the Hellenic society has a film evening. There are also national societies for Malaysian, Turkish, and Chinese students. And don't forget, these societies are open to everyone, whether you're from that country or not. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 17 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 17 to 20. Finally, I'd like to say something about the flourishing arts scene here. This is centred mainly on the Lakeside Theatre and includes a full programme of music, theatre and visual arts. As far as visual arts are concerned, the University Gallery has exhibitions throughout the year. The work of local, national and international artists is regularly on display, as well as exhibitions featuring contemporary architects and designers. The university also has a permanent collection of modern Eastern European art on display, as well as the conventional theatre productions put on by visiting professional companies and student groups. There is a workshop studio which stages more experimental drama. And finally, music. Concerts catering for a variety of musical tastes include performances by visiting groups as well as homegrown talent. The university has its own jazz band and choir. As with the other groups I referred to earlier, you're eligible to join these, but of course you will be required to go for an audition. So, there you have it. Obviously I haven't covered everything in this short introduction, but I hope I've given you a flavour of what's on offer here. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. Part three. You are going to listen to a conversation between two students talking about a lecture they have just attended. First, look at questions 21 to 24. There are four alternative answers, A, B, C, and D, for each question. Decide which alternative is the most suitable answer and circle the appropriate letter. Henry, don't you think Dr. Adams' lecture was really very good? He could talk about the telephone directory and make it interesting. All his lectures are like that, Astrid. He's just one of those people. I wish we had him as our tutor. I bet you that he is very demanding, though. Boris is in his tutorial group and agrees that he is a brilliant lecturer, but he puts them under a lot of pressure. Hmm. But don't you think that's good? Perhaps. But I am glad to have Dr. Adams as a lecturer. He's interesting and rather funny and puts just the right amount of pressure on people. Did you take lots of notes in the lecture? Yes, actually I did. 
In fact, several pages. I didn't think I had taken so many. I was that busy listening to what was being said that I didn't take many notes. Can I photocopy yours? I don't think that's such a good idea. You won't be able to read my handwriting, and sometimes I write them in English and sometimes in Arabic. Oh, let's have a look. Wow, your notes are so neat. There's not much Arabic. There is on this page. Oh yes, there is. Doctor Adams would be pleased to see this, especially given what he was talking about. Don't you keep careful notes? Hmm. Sometimes, it depends on the lecture. I don't think I'll forget Adams's lecture today, but some of the detail will fade. Before the conversation continues, look at questions twenty-five to thirty. As you listen to the next part of the conversation, I type up everything afterwards, so you can have a copy then, and you can fill in anything I have missed. I'm not so good on the broader concepts. I'm better when it comes to detail. Just what Adams was talking about. Well, I am definitely a detail person. I need to have everything written down before、As、I can get the concepts clear. As you listen to the next part of the conversation, write no more than complete four opposite. words for questions twenty-five to twenty-seven. I find all the detail to clutter up my mind, and I get very frustrated. And for questions twenty-eight to thirty, which was just what he was on write about. Write no more than two words for each answer. He mentioned several. The one on space and the individual. Yes, called my space. It's on the book list. So it is. I think I'll get that out of the library or, or get my own copy. Did you get what he said about spatial awareness? I didn't really.、Oh, yes, it was fascinating. I can't be as eloquent as Adams was, but I know several people who are frighteningly intelligent, but they have difficulty reading simple directions, even when getting to places that they know very well. I find that difficult to understand. Everyone learns the way to walk to the shops and things like that. You mean just the way people learn spelling? You know, people misspell words, make mistakes in countless areas of their lives, and going in the right direction is just the same. Remember what Adam said about the number of people who cannot tell left from right, north from south, and so on. Do you know which way is north? It's、um, that way. You see. I couldn't have told you that. Really? I haven't a clue which way is which. That's why I'm always getting lost when I go out on my bike and put me in a completely new place, and I am totally lost. What about maps? I'm hopeless at reading them. But then you're brilliant at writing essays and getting all the ideas down in the right order, and I don't know where to start. Again, just what Adams was talking about. What we need to do is combine our skills. You teach me to cope with detail, and I'll teach you how to string concepts together. Okay, we can do that. Which way is the library? It's.、Uh, you're making fun of me. <laughs> That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part four. 
Part 4. You are going to listen to a lecture on language learning. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. This is the first in our series of lectures on language learning. The topic I'd like to deal with today is what makes a successful language learner? There's been a lot of research into what makes some people learn a language faster than others. In this lecture, I'll summarize the main findings of the research into the subject. There are many factors that influence how quickly one learns a foreign language, of which exposure to the target language seems to be one of the most important factors to consider. It's this factor which determines the speed of learning a language, especially among those people who learn a foreign language outside the classroom. There are more people who did not learn a second language or a third language in the classroom, and I think that understanding how learners successfully learn languages without the help of a teacher can provide us with the key to how to become a successful language learner. Let's look, then, at the characteristics of a successful language learner. Motivation seems to be one of the key factors. Research into motivation has identified two main types, instrumental motivation and integrative motivation. Instrumental motivation is the kind of motivation that encourages people to learn a language for practical reasons, such as getting a job or passing an examination. Learners with this kind of motivation intend to use the target language as a tool or instrument to help them achieve a goal. Integrative motivation is what encourages learners to learn a language in order to communicate and socialize with others who speak the language. The primary aim for learners with integrative motivation is to use the language to integrate and identify with the community that uses the language. Immigrants, or people who are married to speakers of another language, are motivated in this way. Although most people have mixed motivation, research into language learning and acquisition suggests that integrative motivation produces much better results and is an important characteristic of successful language learners. Personality is another important factor in language learning. One does not need to be an extrovert to learn a foreign language, but willingness to experiment and take risks is essential. Introverted or anxious learners who are afraid of making mistakes find it harder to learn a language. Good language learners will try to experiment with different ways of learning vocabulary or grammar until they find the way that suits them best. Language is a complex system. Successful language learners often design complex learning systems to master a language. They think about how they learn and organize their learning accordingly. They develop their own learning style and use a range of learning skills such as efficient revision techniques, systems for learning and organizing vocabulary, the ability to monitor their own speech, and the ability to plan their learning. Finally, age is another major factor to be borne in mind. Children seem to be in the best position to learn a foreign language rapidly and with the best results. 
Older learners can also be very successful and become proficient at using a language. Adult learners who make decisions about their learning and are independent of the teacher, who are analytical and aware of how they learn, and who take responsibility for their learning, stand a very good chance of learning a foreign language successfully. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.